G'day, Rick here again, and here's another video on automating your daily notes. And in this video, we're actually going to be looking at incorporating some data view queries into it. Don't be completely confused, though, about this, because it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use these in a daily note. They can be used in any note, but I'm just showing you how to use them in a daily note for the purposes of an example. But there's no reason you can't put data view queries in any note. So let's get into it, shall we? So we're going to explore data view queries in the daily note template. And I'm going to show you three examples of some that I use. And the first one's a reminder about articles that I intend to write. So it's in my face every day. The second one shows me all the notes that I've created today. And the third one shows me all the notes that I have worked on today. So just three basic examples. Now I tend to put all my queries into callouts, Obsidian callouts, which you'll see as we go through the video. Uh, it makes them tidier, in my view. It also means that I can compact them down quite easily and only show the content of them when I unfold them, as you'll also see in the video. So let's have a look at our, our callouts as well. Now, I might also mention that Obsidian does have quite a number of callouts that you can use, and you might like to explore the community plugin Callout Manager, and I've got a link to that in the show notes. Uh, and it, sh it shows you all the different sorts of callouts that you can use and color configurations and things like that. But we'll be confining ourselves for the purpose of this video just to some simple notes. If you write a lot of articles, one thing you might not like is to have them all listed in your daily note, even if they're folded up. Another option is now uh, Obsidian has just come out with a new core plugin called Bookmarks. And which is located up here. And there's no reason why you can't put your data view query into a bookmark, which you can then access from a side, the side panel quite easily. What I would suggest you do if you're interested in something like that is to go and have a look at Nick Milo's new video on bookmarks and how he uses them. It's an excellent demonstration of the power of bookmarks and what you can do with them, and it just might suit your particular usage. Okay, on with what we're doing now. Right, for our first example, we're going to have a look at this articles to write call out. And you can see it here on the screen, uh, completed as it is. The first example here is actually in a call out, and the second example is not. So there's the two options that you can use, and I'll show you both ways of doing them. So in the articles to write, to get this information to come in, you need to have a placeholder. So if you've decided to write an article, create a new note, and put some information in there, just bare information that you will go back to to complete your article. So I've created a temporary test article here. Let's go over to that. And uh, this is how I set it up in the template. And you can see here that at the top, I've got you know, where it goes up to and the tags. And I'm not going to worry about anything else here apart from the tags. And I'm going to put uh, here, um, uh, article to do, and to write, I want to, I want I want that tag because that tag is going to be very important in the future. So I've called it a test article already. That should be there. And then if I go back here to my daily note, you'll see that it's already brought in the test article. So that's how it works in both there and there in the query. So. For every article I intend to write, I create a note as a placeholder and I structure it with that tag. Once the article is written, then I remove the to write or the to do write tag and put another tag there about what the article's about or whatever, and that way it won't appear in the call out any longer. So to achieve this, this is this is the code that you use. So get ready for your screenshots. Um, now there is whoop, no. I don't want that. Okay, so this is how it's structured, and you'll be able to see this quite clearly, a lot more clearly, in the uh, article, which is linked to in the show notes, where the code is shown quite clearly. All right, and this is how I set up my data view query there. This is the one that creates it in a list. You can see it's got list there. This one here doesn't use the call out. It's just there. And it's, you notice it doesn't have the note tags at the top like example, it just put, puts a list. So this one here, um, let's go back for a moment. 
and you can see that it displays in full. Now, if I don't want it to display when I open my note, all I need to do is to go after example, put a minus tag, right, close the note, and there you go, it is no longer displaying in full. I have to actually tip, tap it here to get it to display. So that's useful. If you've got a lot of content within your call out, you can collapse it down and make sure that it's nice and nice and folded. So that's our first one for doing articles to write. Okay, now let's have a look at the uh, call out for the notes that have been created today. So I keep this down the bottom here. I'll just open it here and it just shows new today in a call out and it's got a couple of notes that have been there. Uh, now I'll just open it up so you can see the code and it's just got the example code, same as really the other one, the data view, the list and then there's some code here about where the file C day, which is the creation day, equals this file day, which is today. So where, where the creation date of the file equals today and then sort them in an ascending order and that's all there is, all there is to it. So again, uh, that plus sign there could be a minus, so it'll be folded if you've created a lot of notes in a day, or you can just leave it open. So that's all there is for the new today one. You may have noticed that we did do a test note earlier and it's not appearing there. That's because I'm recording this on the 16th and we're using the 15th of April as the daily notes, which is why that's not showing. So that shows you as well that it actually only brings in the notes created today. So the notes modified today is a very similar one to the created today one. We'll just open it there and you can see it's modified today. The headings changed and it's got three notes there that I've worked on today. If we open up the code block and whoop, we'll do it again. And you can see here there's the code again. We're calling for a list where the file modified day is equal to today and where the path doesn't contain this file path 9123 2023 which is the which is the, the path to my daily notes i don't really want to see my daily notes in this list of being modified today i should have i should have done them anyway but that's up to you and then sort the file in the ascending order so that's all there is to creating both those sets of notes that appear down the bottom of your daily note if you choose to do so Okay, so there you have it. That's just a couple of examples of what can be done in your daily notes or elsewhere uh, with data view queries. And really, look, we've just scratched the surface with them. It's a very, very powerful community plugin. Uh, there is also a site where you can build basic data view queries, and I'll include a link to that in the show notes. And also in the Obsidian forum on Discord, you'll also find a particular channel for data view where there's some very, very clever people that can help you out with, uh, with out of your queries. But have a crack at it first and put up the work that you've tried to do and let them correct it. And that's the best way of approaching people. So I hope this added, added some interest to you and we'll get on with our series uh, very shortly with some more ways to automate your day of the note. Cheers.